Hi everyone, welcome back to Organized Intention, where I teach personal finance and organization to help you live with organized intention. Today we are going to be doing a final review of the budget for June and creating the new budget for, June, for July of 2020. First, we have to update the sinking funds. You can see here that's the sheet that we're on. And I have already copied the June totals here and then created the new one for July. But into June, here is what we did. We added 508.33, which is our usual amount that we add to sinking funds. I have that in a breakdown here, you can see. So we take 508.33 every month and put that toward our sinking funds. I also added the interest earned to the clothing account. That's here, the dollar and 41 cent, since it's a new sinking fund that had a zero balance. I transferred $664.68 from my checking account to the savings account. This was the amount in excess of the $4,137.18 here that we already had, um, that we had to spend in order to sell our house. So that's how much we had to spend out of pocket in order to finalize the sale of our home. The other expenses that we had, you can see here, we had $40 for haircuts for the boys and we had $82.28 for a medical bill from a doctor's visit my husband had a few months ago. So that was our June expenses. And then I placed the ending balances that were here and use them as the beginning balances here. So our sinking fund balance is $18,2182 with a $1,000 emergency fund, bringing the savings account total to $28,2182. Now that the sinking funds are done, I can show you the June results of the budget. So this is what June ended up like. First, in the income section, my husband received a bonus from his job for working during the COVID-19 pandemic. And his fifth of the month check, which would have been deposited on the 5th of July, was deposited early. This sometimes happens in June because his employer pays him before the budget year ends for them. So our income was substantially higher than expected. You can also see that we used those excess funds to make a large student loan payment because that is where our uh, focus is now. You know, previously it had been being putting money aside into that house savings account fund for the close of our house. But now that that is done, we of course go back to our debt payoff plan which means that our student loans are the first thing that we are working on paying off. You can see our expenses here. Next, our monthly expenses. You can see that we had to add the savings amount here that I previously mentioned in order to close on our house. We also overspent on our eating out budget. We really need to work on this. For Everything else was as planned. For our weekly expenses, we went over budget on the groceries expenses. It wasn't as bad as May. Um, and this budget total did include a renewal of our Costco membership, which hindsight's 2020, I should probably start a sinking fund for. Our gas was a little over budget as well. We drove a little further. Uh, for groceries so that we could go to Costco. Our other expenses are shown here. My husband's truck repair ended up only being $200 instead of $400, and that was good. So we budgeted $450, and we only spent $200 on that, which is great. And then Father's Day came in a little bit under at $83.36 instead of $100. As you can see, we were too, not too far off on our totals. So 
when I, at the end of the month, saw that there was a balance here, that is what I tacked on to the student loan payment, meaning that there is now a difference of zero, meaning that we have a zero-based budget. We spent every dollar that we made. We had a place for every dollar. Next, we I made the new budget sheet for July. Uh, please note that the bills have changed quite a bit because we no longer have the house payment or the associated expenses with the house. First, I put in this expected income here. And I mentioned before that my husband's check on the 5th of the month was deposited early, so we will not receive that in July because we got it in June. So the income is a bit different than it normally is, but there are five paychecks for me in July because I'm paid weekly. So nothing in the monthly expenses really changed. I updated the monthly totals for the weekly expenses to reflect five weeks this month instead of four. So you can see here I changed the multiplier to five. The amounts are the same except for gas, which is because it's my birthday this month and I know there will be some extra driving for that. Also, my husband had been working from home two to three days a week because of the pandemic, but he is now back in his office, so he will be driving every day again. I'm really hopeful about sticking to the grocery budget this month. I'm going to start pulling out the cash again every week in hopes that going to the store with actual cash will help me get back on track. And for week one, I have already pulled out the money and I have already been to the grocery store. So that went well. I did not go over budget, which is great. In this other box, I just added up the miscellaneous money, depending on what was left here so that we'd have a zero balance. So, and I, then I put $100 into a birthday fund because my husband and I are going on an outing for my birthday. You can see here that I already have the week one income and expenses in there. I did those when I got paid this week. So there is our difference thus far. I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out the description box below where I will link the budget explanation video and the debt payoff video. I will also link the blog article that explains our budget. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.